Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new knife console for you on the CRKT Incendiary. This is a knife that follows perfectly for my channel because it's a Robert Carter design modeled after the Custom Tech, a knife which I absolutely adore. And many of you know that I really like Rob Carter's design. Rob Carter is a custom knife maker out of Hillister, Texas, and I happen to own quite a few of his knives, and I plan to own quite a few more of them. And so uh, it was very special to me to see that they just came out with a new production knife uh, that was modeled after one that I already had, the Custom Tech. Um, this is the second in a lineup of knives between CRKT and Ruger to have a Robert Carter design. They did come out with uh, a knife based off the F-16. Uh, the name on that one is escaping me right now. I will leave a link down below to find this knife and the F-16 variant as well. That one was a flipper. I understand that Rob was not the most happy with that knife, uh, and I don't think I realized that it was an F-16 uh, production model. I may have to pick that up for a review, but... The Incendiary just came out, and as I mentioned before, it is a $43 knife uh, at most of your uh, retailers, including Blade HQ, where I picked this guy up. Uh, it has 8CR13 MOV, uh, al aluminum scales, a steel frame, and uh, let's just go ahead and see what we're looking at. As you can see, the design is basically exactly like the custom version. It features a compound grind with a hollow grind and a flat grind at the tip. It features a large pivot and this very ergonomic handle. So we're going to go ahead and move the full custom off the screen. Uh, I dropped this one a few weeks ago and so it's got some scratches I don't want to show up close. So what we are going to go ahead and do is get a quick overview of this guy. We'll take a look at the incendiary. It is a thumb disc opener, frame lock, with a black wash finish and it is pretty good for 40 bucks honestly i'm really impressed and we're going to get into some of these details right now but before we do that let's go ahead and get some vital signs on this knife it has the exact same specs as that custom tech so you're looking at just over a three inch blade you're looking at about 3.1 inches maybe right at three inches even of blade with slightly less than three inches of cutting length you're right at seven inches of overall length and there is about four inches of handle and the grip area is right at four inches as well. The uh, handle thickness here is coming in at 0.517 and the blade stock at its thickest point back here is coming in at 150 thousandths. So it is a uh, an EDC oriented knife with regards to its thickness it's uh, it's about a half an inch thick with a normal blade stock right here. It is a thicker blade stock uh, than sometimes we see for EDC use, but it is a quite thinly ground hollow grind, and we're going to go ahead and get into that. Uh, let me bring out another couple of knives for a quick size comparison. Here is a Spyderco Paramilitary 3, a Para 3, and here is the Paramilitary 2. As you can see, the incendiary is actually smaller then a pair of two right there. So that's pretty impressive. I'll bring out another couple of smaller knives. Here is a CRKT M16 14T. Bringing out some more budget options right here. This is a very small knife. And so you can see that uh, it actually is a, a very small knife, this incendiary. Here is the uh, BBM right here. So you can see it stacks up to another Robert, smaller Robert Carter design right there. So uh, the... Knife, as I mentioned before, has an 8CR13 MOV blade. Let's go ahead and break this guy down anatomically and see what we're working with. That blade is really nicely done. Honestly, it, you know, for 43 bucks, you're not really expecting to get the world here. But they have done the compound grind. It is very nicely hollowed. It becomes very thin behind the edge. You can see that here uh, at the plunge grind area, how thin that becomes behind the edge. Uh, you can see that the plunge grind is done in such a way that the Ricasso allows for an actual sharpened edge. It's not perfectly done. I think that they could have fixed that a little bit there. There's a bit of a smile at the edge, but it could be done better. It really could be. Uh, I will say that the grinds are pretty even from side to side. I'm impressed with how well they did this. Uh, and the way that this thing slices is pretty amazing. It really came crazy sharp from the factory. You can see how tall 
that edge bevel is, this thing must have gotten sharpened down to, you know, maybe, a, I don't know, 17 degrees a side. Even if it's 20, that's a huge edge bevel. It's very sharp, uh, and it slices quite well. And uh, I've been very happy with the blade performance. I really like this Spanto-style grind because it gives you two tips. You get the pointy tip, and then you get the secondary tip right here. It's great for EDC cutting needs. Something I like about the Custom Tech blade, as well as this blade, is this thumb divot. It's a little bit different than some of his other thumb divots. <clears throat> some of the others are a bit sharper. Uh, this one is a bit more sloped, and it really allows you to rest your thumb on there quite nicely. It also lets you use your index finger on there quite nicely, and it certainly captured the visual cues of the Robert Carter series of knives. Now, this is a thumb disc opener only, and some people are going to be upset by that. Some people hate thumb discs, but in the spectrum of thumb disc knives, this one is not half bad. They've got a little bit of jimping around the outer edges of the disc, and it allows you to get really good purchase with your thumb if, in case you want to open it the standard way, in case you want to thumb flick it open, or even if you want to spidey flick it open. Now, uh, I didn't really do that one quite right, but it will spidey flick open, and you can see that. So that's pretty impressive that they've gotten the action tuned uh, to that standard, considering this thing runs on Teflon washers. The thing about Teflon washers are you might think that they're bad right up front and the action is gritty, but over time the Teflon wears away and it actually lubricates the surface of the metal by grinding some of the Teflon into that surface. And so this knife becomes smoother over time. This knife has significantly smoothed out since I got it. And when I pick it up and play with it for a couple of minutes, it actually continues to smooth out and get even better. So I can't complain terribly much about the use of Teflon washers here because I think it's a pretty good use. I like the use of washers, and I think that over time this will self-lubricate and become very smooth, and I, I think that it's quite nice. It has a stop pin right there, uh, and it has a steel uh, lock. Uh, what am I trying to say? A steel uh, frame lock, so it is a lockup like this with steel on steel, so no need for an insert. This uh, pivot hardware is actually pretty nice for a f basic knife. It's a nice black uh, pivot hardware, larger, very nice. T8 screws. These are T6 screws back here and for the clip. There is uh, the, the stop pin is shouldered and it is not screwed in. So much like the pair of three, this will not affect the knife's action as you uh, disassemble and reassemble. Speaking of disassembly, I did take this knife apart a number of times. I actually did it. Uh, I tried to put some phosphor bronze washers in there and see if that would work. Uh, they weren't quite the right size. That didn't work. But I put this right back together, and it does disassemble and reassemble rather easily. <clears throat> there is uh, some steel screw shoes inside of the uh, backspacer, and so it is quite a nice construction. Let's go ahead and move back to the handle right here. Oh, sorry. The uh, handle scale here is uh, black aluminum, black anodized aluminum, with a key mod style appearance. Now this knife is made in conjunction with Ruger, the gun company, and so this is uh, hearkening to their gun, uh, you know, sort of motif, that this is a common thing seen on some rifles and other things like that. Uh, on the back it is a steel frame lock, and it is also done in a matching black wash finish. Uh, it's got a pretty standard appearance right here. What I will comment on is that it's quite nicely contoured. You can see that the there, this is rounded, and so it's got quite a nice feel in the hand. You know, actually, even the Custom Tech is rather slab-sided, uh, and it's not actually contoured like this knife is. This has some very nice contouring. It's actually a step closer in some regards to the full Custom, which is fully contoured like that. So quite an impressive thing to see on a budget knife like this. As you can see, it features a deep carry pocket clip, which functions quite nicely. It's made of steel. It's got perfect amount of spring. It's got a nice ramp right here. It's nice and smooth with this bent style clip, and it works great. I have really enjoyed using it. It works as well as any deep carry clip as I, that I've ever used. It slides in and out of the pocket very easily along this smooth frame. So what do I think of this knife? Honestly, I'm really happy with this. For $43, this is a really nice knife. Uh, a lot of knives that have come out from Robert Carter design uh, with Robert Carter designs have been a bit disappointing. I've handled the uh, Carter Squared. Uh, that one was a little bit more on the expensive side of things and had some problems, including the uh, blade hitting the backspacer on some of them. 
The Carter Trinity was just kind of a flop because it had a flipper that didn't really work all that well and it got in the way of the ergonomics and it didn't stay true to the original custom design. This knife, however, really does stay true. I, I'll also say that the F16 variant from CRKD doesn't really flip all that well. This one may be the closest representation of, uh, of Rob Carter's work where it actually is fun, where it actually is pretty well made, and it stays true to the form of the custom version. And so I can really recommend this. For 40 bucks. if you like Rob Carter's designs, if you like the custom tech, this is a pretty painless way to get into that. Really, the ergonomics are quite nice. The way that this sits in the hand, your thumb rests on here, your finger rests here, and this just, uh, you get a full four finger grip even with a larger hand, and you can really use that blade. Comfortable over the hand grip. Uh, I did not mention the weight. Uh, this is a little bit on the heavier side given the full steel uh, construction right there. The aluminum does help uh, offset that weight a little bit. It comes in at 4.83 ounces. For a three inch blade, that's a little bit on the heavy side. However, uh, that is still within the parameters of a, an easy EDC knife. And it gives it a nice sort of heft and solidity that I really enjoy uh, on a lot of knives. So if you were looking for a budget Robert Carter design, this is the place to start. This is probably the best one that I've seen so far. Even though the uh, squ Carter Squared might have nicer materials with ball bearings and a flipper and titanium handles, I don't know that it was executed even as well as this one is with regards to staying true to the original design and uh, and, and working well. So uh, certainly worth checking out. I will leave some links down below so you guys can find this knife. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, leave some comments down below. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my channel. Go and check out my other videos on Robert Carter Knives. Check out the video on the Custom Tech and everything else that is Rob Carter on this channel. Go and check him out on Instagram as Robert Carter Knives. And uh, as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.